Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to Elastic Motions, a cool new feature with Crazy Talk Animator 3. So essentially Elastic Motions are used to bring life to your props, images, objects, text, or logos in your scene. Uh, there's an extensive library embedded with Crazy Talk Animator 3 and you can also purchase separate Elastic Motions from the content store. We're also going to talk a little bit about how you can modify your Elastic Motions using a parametric control panel further on in this tutorial. And keep in mind that the elastic motions are only used for props. So if you want to add some dynamic, energetic, stretchy kind of entrance and exit motions to your props really simply with a single click, then this is the tutorial for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to import in a custom prop here. Now I have this porkypig.png image, transparent PNG that I've downloaded from Google Image Search. I'm just going to click and drag that into my uh, scene right here and import it in as a prop, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look, before we apply anything, we're going to take a look at the makeup of this prop. So if I press Control F1, uh, you can see that it'll have a white line through it. And basically any prop that you import in will have this uh, sort of uh, initial geometry. So what you want to do to fix that is you want to go up here to Edit, and you want to select Smooth Deformed Object. And this will create a mesh like this that uh, allows for a lot more stretchy and, uh, you know, smooth modification and stretching of the uh, of the mesh. You can also access that by going over here to your prop key editor and going to deform and selecting and deselecting smooth deform object. So let's take a look at the difference this makes by applying a quick uh, clip here. So we're going to go to elastic motion. I'm going to apply an FFD clip, which we talk about in separate tutorials, but just to kind of demo the purpose uh, of this of this uh, mesh here. So we're going to uh, use this freebie pop motion, which you can download for free from our uh, Facebook page. I'm just going to apply that to my uh, porky pig head there. You can see it kind of stretches out and pow, just pops like that. So I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline, open up the motion track where you can find the uh, FFT clip here. And if we scrub through, you can see it kind of expands like that. Now, if I go into my prop key editor and I deselect smooth deformed object, it's going to have a simple geometry and it's going to distort a little bit like this. Now this is not what we want. So whenever you're using elastic motions or FFD uh, clips, you want to make sure that you select smooth deformed objects. So you have a much, you know, more, a much smoother and more cartoon like result when you're animating this. All right. So let's uh, just keep that in mind. Let's press control F1 a couple times to toggle that off. We can close down the uh, timeline there and close down the prop key editor. Go back to frame one here. And I'm going to right click my image there and just remove object animation. So we have a basic porky pig here. And then we can get to applying some motions to it. So elastic motions you can find in the elastic motion tab down here under, uh, there's entrance ones that, uh, you know, can uh, enter your prop into the scene, so to speak. Uh, there's emphasis FFD, which stands for free form deformation clips. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. And there's also exit ones, which uh, kind of exit your prop or your character or whatever from the scene in a very dynamic fashion. Now before we get into this, you want to make sure that you have, uh, go to your edit uh, menu right here, and you want to make sure that you have smooth deformed object selected. Now we can also go over here to our prop key editor, and you can see that if we go to the deform option right here, we can select and deselect smooth deformed object. Now the difference that makes is if I press control F1 on my character, if I select my object, press control F1, you can see this is kind of like the uh, wireframe mesh that uh, my character has. And I can press Control F1 again, and we can see the mesh right there. Now, if we don't have smooth deformed object on, it's only going to be a single, like, you know, two kind of just a very, very simple wireframe. So because we're stretching and deforming our object with elastic motions, we want to make sure that we have smooth deformed objects selected so we can have more geometry, so we can stretch it in a smoother and uh, easier fashion. We'll talk about a little bit more about this in our FFD clip tutorial as well. All right, so just make sure you have that selected smooth deform object. And let's take a look at applying our uh, press control F1 here again to uh, toggle that off. Now let's make sure that we, uh, let's take a look at applying our uh, clips now. So we're going to go to over here to elastic motion and entrance. And there's a number of different, you know, entrance uh, animations for your character, you know, enter, bounce, you can grow. Uh, let's go a little bit further down here. There's a roll damp, uh, roll elastic. So all kinds of really cool dynamic uh, entrances uh, for your character. And in addition to that, we also I've also downloaded the G3 Elastic Motions uh, content pack from the Power Tools 
Uh, you can purchase this in the content store. So, you know, a number of different worlds and, uh, you know, scales, uh, all kinds of really interesting stuff that you can, you know, really quickly and easily apply to any of your props. Uh, on top of that, we also have Emphasis FFD clips. Um, you know, the ones that are embedded with Crazy Talk Animator 3 are like this uh, bounce one. There's a, you know, breeze, uh, for example. You can have your uh, character's head in the breeze. There's drag left and drag right. All sorts of fun stuff that you can apply on your own time. And there's also the Elastic Motions uh, content pack, like I mentioned before. Um, these ones are really kind of stretchy and fun to, to mess around with. Uh, very dynamic and uh, energetic uh, for use with uh, any prop in your scene. There's also the exit ones as well. So there's, you know, uh, we can have our Porky Pig head disappear there. There's all these world ones, which we'll apply in just a moment. Uh, on top of that, there's some, uh, you know, move ones. We can you know, have our prop exit the scene in various ways. And there's also, of course, the uh, elastic motions, like I mentioned uh, before, like I showed in the uh, previous examples. So, uh, you know, various ways that you can have your prop exit the scene. All right, now let's press F3 and go into our timeline, open up the uh, motion track where all these clips are stored. I'm going to hold Alt and scroll my mouse button just to zoom out here. Now, take a look at the difference in colors between these clips. The first ones that I applied were entrance clips. So their elastic motions are always green color uh, for the clips. The FFD clips are all always gray. And we'll talk a little bit about the difference between those in just a moment. But for now, I'm just going to click and drag and select everything and just go ahead and delete them all. And now we just have our plain old porky pig in the middle of our scene. All right, so let's take a look at applying these in combination. So I'm going to go to my entrance clips right here, and I'm going to apply an entrance clip that's embedded with Crazy Talk Animator 3 called Move underscore Bounce. All right, so just this one right here. And we have our character boings, bounce onto the scene. Now we're going to combine that with an FFD clip. So let's go to Emphasis FFD. Now there's different ones you can apply, like the Bounce Up, Bounce Down, but I'm going to choose this one, uh, Drag Right. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So we can have it, you know, stretching to the right a little bit. And then for exit, let's just go to our main exit folder here, and we're going to use one called Whirl Minimize, I believe. Should be down here somewhere. There we go. There you go. It kind of just disappears off the screen. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline. Hold Alt and scroll our mouse button up just to kind of just to kind of get a better look at our clips. All right, so there's our entrance clip right there. There's the FFD clip and the exit clip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of move this FFD clip a little bit over to the left because what happens if I press space and play back, it'll bounce and then stretch, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what I want to do is have it stretch right before the first bounce. So like right here at frame 15, I want to click and drag the second clip, move it over to about frame 15, and what's going to happen now is it's going to bring in, come into the scene like that and stretch just like this. Okay, so, you know, all right, and then it goes back into that uh, position. And there's our completed animation. All right, so pretty cool. We just combine those three uh, really quickly and easily. That's kind of the point of the elastic motion clips. Really quickly and easy, really, really quick and easy to apply to any of your props. All right. Now, another cool thing about the elastic motion clips, like I mentioned, is you can also modify them using a parametric control. So if I click on this clip right here and I double click on it, it's going to open up the elastic motion editor. All right. Now, if I scroll my mouse button or my timeline or time scrub rather over the FFD clip, notice that this becomes deactivated because you cannot control the FFD clips with this panel. And if I go back to the exit clip over here, it will become reactivated. Okay. So to make sure you are aware that you cannot uh, modify the FFD clips uh, using this panel. So take a look at the top two options here. Now, basic and pro users won't have these two options. Uh, pipeline users will, so keep that in mind. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, let's uh, zoom out quite a bit here, actually. You can see this is the origin point of my entrance, okay? So it's automatically generated an origin point, and it'll come in like that. Now, if I change this to an exit clip, notice that now the origin point becomes the destination, okay? So now it kind of goes like this, and it snaps back because of the FFD clip. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do this, but uh, that's how you can, you know, basically just reverse uh, these options right here. So if I, you know, uh, turn that down, the motion again here, and double click on this, you can also right click and select Elastic Motion Editor here as well. 
Uh, we want to make that an entrance clip, not an exit clip. Okay. So uh, you can also change the position of the origin. So say, for example, I wanted the character to come in from the top, or the prop rather, to come in from the top. And then we have an entrance like this, which doesn't make a lot of sense because he's stretching to the right but coming in from the top. So, you know, generally we wouldn't want to do that. But you can also, you know, just change the origin point uh, to wherever you want on your scene. You can see the move values change there as I click and drag this porky pig around. Okay, and there's also rotation as well. So if I want to uh, rotate my character as he's entering the uh, scene, uh, we can do that. So let's enter in a value of uh, 360 degrees here. 360, okay. And uh, now if I scroll through the timeline, he will rotate 360 degrees, just like that. And if you're bad with numbers like me, you can also switch the rotation unit and uh, enter in a number of turns. So if we wanted to, we can change this to a value of three. Oops, not 13, probably uh, three would be a bit more reasonable. And then if we uh, scroll in, you can see he'll make three complete revolutions on his way to his destination for the entrance point. All right, let's just change this back down to zero, for example. And then if we uh, scroll through the timeline, we're not gonna have uh, any sort of turns as we approach. We can also change the scale value as well. Now, if I select lock ratio, it's gonna change our uh, uniformly scale the uh, width and the height. So if I change this to zero for now, uh, just press, uh, not point zero, zero there, what's gonna happen is it's going to scale in and it's going to reach 100% at the destination. Okay, so right here it's gonna reach 100 and just scale in like that. Now, if you change it to an exit clip, it's going to scale out. Okay, so keep that in mind. Entrance and exit, you're gonna have different uh, scales right here. All right. So let's just close this down right now. And if we select our, uh, go into our motion clip one more time here, uh, let's just double click on it. And now we also have the option for repeat and enlarge clip. So if I take these two clips, uh, the second and third clips here, by control selecting them, click and drag them a little bit further down, what I can do is I can actually enlarge this elastic motion clip, the first one. If I change that value to two, it's basically just gonna double the time it takes to enter. All right, so it's kind of basically similar to using this uh, speed option when you modify your regular clips, okay? So if we play back now, it's gonna, you know, be a lot, take a lot longer to enter. We can change that back to one, and play back, and it's gonna be a lot faster like this. So for FFD clips, again, you want to use your uh, speed option right here or your loop option to either change the speed or loop the emphasis. All right, so we'll uh, cover that in another tutorial though. Let's click and drag these second two over here. I think it was to frame 15 we wanted it to be at. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so there's our entrance and our exit. All right, cool. So let's take a look now finally at the align option and the fade out option. So with this exit uh, right here, let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a little bit closer in. Uh, with the exit, right now you can see it's whirling around the center axis so around the center of my image which is that little blue dot right there i can change this to you know uh, rotate around the top right for example if i do that you can see his right ear is going to be kind of like the pivot point of our exit so we can exit like this just like that off to the distance to the right or we can exit off in the distance to the left top left ear is now the uh, rotation point uh, we can do we can do from the bottom center there this might be a little bit uh, more interesting because it kind of, you know, his bow tie is kind of the uh, pivot point right there. Let's say you can, you know, just modify the different uh, align values or the pivot point for your entrances and your exits. All right. And if we wanted to, you know, fade this out, we can do so as well by just selecting fade out. And when we do that, he's going to start fading out uniformly from the beginning to the end. And you can see right there the uh, fade out. All right, we'll not, we'll just uh, deselect that for now. And now I'm going to introduce you to the coolest part of the Elastic Motion Editor, which is the Motion Curve options right here. So these options allow you to, you know, modify the speed at which your Elastic Motion Clips apply to your prop. So you can see if we mouse over each one of these, you kind of get a good example of the uh, animation curve that's going to occur, all right? So say, for example, this, uh, you know, exit, if we uh, press space, you know, it'll just kind of, you know, go uniformly. Uh, it'll kind of stutter a little bit. If we click it, 
we can change this to accelerate. And you can see when we do that, if we just uh, press space, it's just going to accelerate its exit. So we're no longer going to have a stutter. So if we change this to stutter start and end, we have something similar to what we had before. All right. We can click all these and kind of just, uh, you know, uh, see, for example, which each one will do. There's a stutter start, which one is pretty cool. Gain momentum and damp. All sorts of various values that you can, you know, modify and have fun with on your own time, depending on the, depending on the level of energy you want in your exit. All right. So for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the accelerate because I think that one looks pretty cool. All right. And on top of the uh, motion curve, uh, templates right here, you can also modify the strength. So if I wanted to increase the strength, for example, you'll notice that it'll kind of, uh, have more of a effect at the very end. So, if we decrease the strength, it'll kind of show a contrast here. So let's take the strength down to a value of maybe like a 10 or 11 or something like that. And notice it'll be almost linear. So the severity of the curve is going to be kind of almost linear. It's going to kind of flatten out that curve. Whereas if we increase the strength, we're going to have very little movement at the beginning and then kind of, you know, zoom out at the end just like really quickly. All right. So that's how you can modify the strength there as well. So you know, we've modified this exit from a stutter start to a kind of really quick acceleration. Now, say, for example, we, we like the way we modified this clip. We liked uh, everything we've done with it so far, and we want to save this uh, Elastic Motion clip for future use. Well, to do that, all you need to do is go to Elastic Motion tab, go to your custom tab up here, and just go ahead and press the plus button for whatever clip you're uh, moused over. So, for example, say I wanted to, you know, save this exit, this really cool exit that I've created custom. I can go and just press the plus button. We'll call it cool exit two since I've already have a cool exit one. And we can just go ahead and apply that uh, at the end. So if we say, for example, here, if we just double click it, zoop, there we go. We've applied another cool exit two. And you can, you know, combine that with any other sort of uh, elastic motion clips as well. Now, if you want to save this entire uh, animation sequence to your character's action menu, you can do that as well by going to select collect clip and clicking and dragging in the collect clip track right here. I'm just going to move this a little bit over just like that. All right. For the duration of all these clips and then just simply right click it and select add to action menu. We'll call it, uh, you know, cool sequence. Okay. For lack of a better name. All right. And then what we can do is we can just go ahead and at the very beginning, or we can just actually just click and drag all these clips and, uh, delete them. So once we do this, we're not going to be able to edit them individually anymore and right click our character or our prop and select action menu and cool sequence. Now we have the entrance and the exit just like that. All right. But now it's one single clip. And if we double click it, you can see where there's no, no, no longer an option to modify the uh, parameters of this elastic motion. Okay. So keep that in mind. So that's really about all there is for the Elastic Motion uh, tutorial. Now we're going to have other tutorials that show how to combine these uh, Elastic Motions with FFD in more you know, complex and interesting ways. And also another tutorial on how to uh, use FFD clips and the prop key editor and uh, deform them in various ways. All right, so thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot here. And make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.